Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're looking at the Rhine Metal Erlikon Sky Guard system, which is this guy here. We've got two units here, we've got the gun unit on the left and we've got a radar unit on the top right. The Sky Guard is a modular system. When it's purchased by a buyer, it can be completely tailored for whatever the job is. If it has to defend a small fob, if it has to defend a large airbase, it doesn't even have to be a static defense. It can be added to moving vehicles. Modules include the gun, as you can see here. We have radar and optical tracking. You can also have C2 command. You can also have surface to air missile firing modules. You can have electronic warfare modules and so on. It's obviously low range air defense and it can be used against, well, pretty much anything that flies. Planes, helicopters, missiles, drones, mortars, rocks, UFOs, who knows? In terms of what we're going to do with it today, well, we're defending an airfield, a very small point on the airfield, and we're going to compare it against two of its contemporaries, shall we say. We have the American Centurion Sea Ram from the 2000s. We have the German Gepard self-propelled gun here from the late 1970s, and of course, Skyguard is contemporary and new. We're going to attack the airfield with several drones at a time, Shahed drones, and see which defends it best. Let's look at some quick statistics so that the results actually mean something. The American C-RAM, of course, is based around a single M61A1 6-barrel 20mm Gatling gun with a staggering rate of fire of 4,500 rounds per minute, with a total of 1,550 rounds, so about 20 seconds of rounds. Maximum effective range around 1.5 miles. The Gepard is a much older system but has been moder modernized over the decades. Based around two 35mm Erlikon GDF auto cannons, each gun has a firing rate of 550 rounds per minute, total 1100 rounds per minute. The magazine contains 640 anti-aircraft rounds, that's for both guns, so that's a little under half a minute of firing time. Range critically is nearly double that of C-RAM with its higher calibre at about 3 miles. For the Skyguard, as I said, it's modular. We'll use just a single gun unit today. Each has a 35mm Rhine Metal revolver cannon with a fire rate of 1,000 rounds per minute. Range similar to the Gepard, around 3 miles, and of course it's more or less the same round in terms of size and power. But what really separates it from the other two is the intelligence of the shell that it fires. Each burst of ammunition is pre-programmed by sensors in the end of the barrel. It fires ahead ammunition, advanced hit efficiency and destruction, a type of air burst round that releases a cloud of sub-projectiles just ahead of the target. Each round splits into 152 tungsten sub-munitions that form a cone-shaped pattern to destroy the target's control surfaces and other vital components. So, although the Skyguard round couldn't be considered guided because it's not guided, it has intelligence. It knows when, exactly when to explode to cause the maximum chance of hitting or disabling the target. I haven't actually run this because I want to be surprised viewers, but in terms of predictions, well, absolute firepower, maximum amount of lead downrange, I guess it's going to be the C-RAM if you sat and worked it out. This guy here slightly has the maximum range, I believe whereas this guy here has the intelligence. Uh, let's start with the American. We're going to fire two trucks worth of Shahed 136, uh, an Iranian-built drone. That's a total of 10 drones. They'll get up to about 2,000 feet from memory, fly at about 130, 140 knots. Initially assisted with rocket boost, they'll start to slow down to 140 or so knots, about 10 miles away from the airfield. We can just speed it up now. Alright, let's go and look at C-RAM. With the lowest range of all three, but with the highest rate of fire. And we have action. Now, where are the hostiles? There they are. Now that is 10 coming in, time on target. Worst case scenario. Got to wait for that 1.5 miles. go. One down. Two down. Three down. Four down. 
Five down. Five down, only five out of ten. That's actually surprisingly bad. Although it fired low, I mean, I don't know how many thousands of rounds it must have fired there, like probably 2,000 rounds or something. You know, 99 point something percent of those rounds did not hit the targets. I suppose that's what really bit it in the butt there. Uh, all right, let's try Gepard. Along you go. 130 knots and begin. All right, so now Gepard has the worst rate of fire here. Well, actually, no, it's not quite right, but per barrel, the worst rate of fire and the lowest amount of ammunition. But what it does have is twice the range, engagement range of CRAM, and that's really useful against slow moving or relatively slow moving targets like this because that means we have twice the amount of time to engage. Now, if you can see anything at all, then let me know because I've got nothing here. massive rate of fire. I think it's uh, 4,700 feet per second. Well, that's doing really bad. Each round seems to be about as effective as a 20 mil US round, but it's firing them much slower. That said, I don't know actually. Because it's firing them so far away, it's got much more time to deal with them. Three down. Missed. Four down. Only four. It seems to get to a saturation point. Same with uh, C RAM, at, uh, at which point it just gives up. It can't track them anymore because they're within the minimum range. So, five for C RAM and four for Gepard. Let's fire up the Sky Shield. Alright. Only bad thing about it is it's really ugly. Look at that. One ugly box. Whereas that is beautiful. In my opinion. <laughs> One shell. There we go. Ooh, no tracers. Why has it got no tracers? That's kind of weird. Two. Three. Four. Five. Drawn even with CRAM. Six. Can they get a clean sheet here? Seven. And that's it, it's given up. Why have you given up? You shouldn't have given up. Is it reloading? I bet it's reloading. Yeah, I think it was reloading. Eight. Nine. Oh, one got through. One got through. Oh, absolutely gutted. I must admit, I thought it was going to defeat them all. Now, I was already planning ahead how many more uh, drones I'm going to have to put in. But it seems that there is a reloading point where it needs a few seconds to, you know, change to its next belt or, or magazine, and then one gets through. So that is a definite weakness. Centurion, five. Gepard, four. Everything the same, position the same, um, skill level the same, you know, whatever. No advantages or disadvantages. Skyguard, nine out of ten. And that one that got through, as I said, seemed to be exploiting the changeover in magazine or whatever it was. Uh, so it's pretty good proof of concept really, if you're going to program your ammunition then um, you'd be much more accurate at the end of the day at longer ranges. I'm just wondering how to finish this off, I've got an idea. I've added two trucks and we're now at 20 time on target drones coming and um, I've allowed all of defence to fire at the same time. So Skyguard, Gepard and CRAM at the same time, although they're not designed to work together so they're in no way going to kind of share targets they're going to shoot at each other's targets they're going to step on each other's toes but it should be uh it should be something to watch anyway 20 drones incoming
so even with all of them on, they couldn't stop 20, but at that point they're not on IADs, so they're not designed to work together, so they'll just be duplicating each other's targets, but still pretty impressive to watch. Well, anyway, just a small thing, I wanted to show how effective Skyguard could be compared to older, uh, less sophisticated designs. I hope that was interesting. Let me know your thoughts, and bye-bye.